Good evening, everybody, and welcome to yet another Photography Locked Down Live. How amazing it is to see you all. Uh, I can't believe where the time has gone either. Let's not think of this as drawing to the end of a 12 week challenge because it's just the beginning of a whole new thing called Photography Locked Down because we are going to lock this sucker down. Yeah? Uh, I know there was things I was hoping to do this week and come live into the group just, just for us, but it didn't happen. There were so many things that, that have to be figured, but don't worry, it's on its way. Nothing much is gonna change, to be honest, but I'm gonna to talk to you more about that later. Good evening, everybody. You're a lovely, lovely bunch of people. I saw several comments this evening, which really made me smile. One from somebody saying, do you know what? This is the only group I come to now, and it's you guys who've made it that. It really is, uh, and I thank you for it, I really do. Um, the other thing which I saw which made me laugh was how so many of you are second guessing what the last challenge is gonna be in the current series. I'm not telling you, you're gonna have to wait. And finally, people, I saw a couple of questions just before we went live, who is Emmeline Churcher? She's his enforcer. That is accurate. <laughs> so here we all are, look at you all, coming in from all over the world, how fantastic thank you all for being here it is completely splendid and amazing so what are we going to be doing tonight well first of all i just want to sort of say there are so many amazing pictures i can't possibly give feedback on all of them and if you're someone who's who hasn't had an image picked by me to do some feedback on please don't take that as a slight uh, and it also doesn't mean that that what you're doing isn't good enough in fact, in some cases, it's completely the opposite. Here's how I do it. I go through, choose all the images, and I stick them in a folder on my hard drive. I then go through and I pick all the ones that just speak to me that go, wow, look at that, and I put them all in another folder. Then I've got to whittle those down to just six, five runners up and one winner. When I do the feedback, I want it to be of the most value to the most number of people. And I don't feel it, it does that if I'm just going, and here's a really great image because, here's a really great image bef because, I think it kind of works better if I can go, you know what, this would be a great image, but I think maybe a little more attention here, a little bit more attention there. I think it helps more people. So you may have produced some stunning images and they haven't even been picked out to be talked about. It doesn't mean they're bad pictures. In fact, it usually means they're great pictures. It's just that in critiquing them, the most people won't get the benefit. Um, anyway. Moving onwards. Um, yeah, so what excites me, as I think you probably know, is creativity and not cameras. And, and you guys are really proving this point because you are doing such creative things just in your home, work, home you know, environment. I've been saying for years to people, you can practice photography anywhere at all. And you've made that real. And again, I thank you for that because <laughs> That's, that's what I'm all about. That is what I'm all about. Um, you know, there's a handful of things on a camera you need to know how to work, a few controls, uh, and the rest of it is all up here. And all those controls are in the Ultimate Beginners course. I've seen so many of you have been uh, asking questions about that and so many of you have been helping others. I don't feel it appropriate for me to comment too much, but thank you to all of, the, all of you who have. And also, I wanna say a huge thank you um, because we've had a, quite a flood of people doing little donations, recurring donations, and you've set those up to try and support this group before we've even got things going. Um, and I really appreciate that. And it's you guys that have actually chosen, caused the future of the way we're gonna go. Photography Lockdown isn't gonna be a monthly membership, which we originally thought it might be. It is going to become uh, donation-based, but it'd be premature to go into that too far right now so what have i got on my notes anything else robin punter thank you for putting up that poll earlier in the week that was really interesting and a great idea <clears throat> something i noticed was that only around 10 percent of you guys in photography lockdown are actually posting pictures so come on guys post some pictures try things out give it a go it doesn't matter if it's not as good as some of the others don't compare yourself to other people um, the learning happens in the doing, not in the watching. Get out there on the court and give it a go. Even if you don't have a great deal of time, even if you think, oh, you know, they might have lots of time, they're furloughed, they're not working, and I am. 
you can find something. One or two of the images that have been uh, come up that have been great have been in the comments. People have said, you know, oh, I only had five minutes, so I just did this. <clears throat> and they've done a great job. So, uh, yeah, there's only 10% of you posting. So, come on, that means there's 90% of you who have yet to do some posting. Um, <clears throat> or post on a regular basis at least, because the value of photo lockdown is the challenge, it's the creative effort, it's seeing what others do is inspiring and interesting. It's great peer-to-peer -peer learning, but you've got to be on the court and doing stuff. Um, you don't get fit by watching someone else run on a treadmill, do you? So what are we gonna do? Usual thing, we're gonna have a little look through some, some pictures, we're gonna do a little bit of feedback, there's some quite interesting things going on, I think, at the moment, and, and uh, I hope that'll be of interest. We'll look at our, uh, what I call, <coughs> what did I call them? Forgive me, I need to go and look. I gave them a name. My, my shout out shortlist, this is going to become a regular thing, I think, because there are some in that folder where I think, okay, I can't put this one as the winner, but I've got to say something. So I'm going to be doing a little shout out shortlist as well. Then we've got our runners up and then finally our winner. Um, Michael K, well done, posted with three minutes to spare. Get in, rock and roll. That is one other thing, guys. Yeah, please be careful about um, getting it in on the deadline because you might get not get things looked at. Anyway, enough of me waffling. Shall we go and look at some pictures? Give us a wave and just say yes if that's what you'd like to do. <clears throat> what have we got here? Right. So... Grishma. Oh, I haven't got my other folder ready. I might get some names wrong tonight. Apologies, because as you know, I have to squint at this little screen. Grishma, I really like your idea. Shapes. I mean, shapes is a really, really kind of uh, angles and shapes. It's a really vague thing, isn't it? But I really love the way you have used these eggs and a little shaft of light going on here. I think it's a really great idea. It's bringing out the shapes beautifully. Black and white works really, really well. However, I think I'm seeing a little bit of an exposure problem going on across a few people. Because, forgive me, I took the liberty of taking your shot and brightening it up a bit. And I hope you will agree that I think it looks an awful lot nicer. <clears throat> Get rid of that background thing so that that's better so it doesn't flash when I change pictures. Um, yeah, if we just go back to the first one, it's a little bit dark, isn't it? Just a little bit more exposure would have just brought it to life a little bit. Um, it's such a great shot. Just, just learn to control your exposure a bit, you know, maybe just a slightly wider aperture or maybe just a slightly higher ISO. It would have just brightened it up. Uh, we, we, I don't know if there is a problem going on with eggs this week because, Alan, you did a beautiful shot of a very similar veil. And I love the shapes. I love the lines, bringing in those lines in the shadow. It's just so strong. There's some wonderful shapes going on here. This is so exciting. But again, I can't help but think it would benefit from just being a little tiny bit brighter, just a little bit more exposure. Now you may be using um, you know, manual exposure, you may not be, but even if you're using manual exposure, don't just set what the light meter tells you to set, because if you do that, it's just the same as shooting in a semi-auto or auto mode, because the light meter doesn't necessarily know how bright or dark you want it, because it's a creative tool in itself, exposure. I'm just looking at my meter. Guys, just give me a shout out. Am I too loud? because my meter looks like it's peaking like crazy. Is it too loud? Please tell me. Um, let me just turn that input down a bit because I think it probably is too loud. Sounds good, yes, well, I've lost. Okay, sounds okay. Oh, okay, as long as you guys are happy, that's all that matters. <coughs> right, back to where we were. A little bit more exposure and I think you'll see the difference is really quite phenomenal. I've been playing around doing this quite a lot this week because we have another wonderful idea here. Um, Angela, Angela Gledhill. I really like your idea. It's so straight, it's, it's beautifully put together. When you've got something this uniform, 
this graphic, you've got to be so careful to make sure the camera is absolutely straight. If you get it a little bit like that, or a little bit like that, or a little bit like that, <coughs> it just ruins it because it distorts all the lines and the angles and things. Um, it's such a great picture. Beautifully done, Angela. But I couldn't help but have a little play and just think, what would it look like if it was a little bit brighter and slightly more contrasty? Hang on, let me just make that cut instead of fade. Look, here's the original one, and then I just brightened it up a little bit. I think it gives it a little bit more punch. This is always a difficult thing to judge because everybody's monitor is probably at a different level of calibration. So it might look perfect on your screen and not quite right on someone else's. There's nothing we can do about that, guys. Um, unless everybody in the world was to calibrate their monitor. And I'm not saying you've got to go and do that by any means, but uh, forgive me if I'm looking at something and going, you know, well, I think it looks a bit dark, and you're going, well, it's not like that on mine. That's all it is. This is such a beautiful idea here from Helen. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that just gorgeous? But just... Once again, I can't help but think um, it could use a little tiny bit more brightness. So, <clears throat> guys, give me your opinion. Do you think as it is, or I've just brightened it? Let me flick between the two a little bit for you. So you can just compare and see what you think. The brighter one, or the slightly darker one? Which one do you prefer? <coughs> Excuse me brighter brighter as it is original brighter brighter darker darker brighter <laughs> you see there's no right and there's no wrong in photography is there and this is another reason why i said earlier don't compare yourself to other people because we just don't know do we um we just don't know what someone else is going to like we have no idea all you can do is go with what you like if you think it's great it's great so it's whatever way you look at it, Helen, it is a really, really beautiful composition. Really nice light. I particularly, I love the way you've got it on a little bit of an angle. Somehow it just adds a feeling to it. I don't think it would have worked quite so well. Was it straight up and down? Can't tell you why. Um, I like the brighter version, but that's just me. I think it's a really great shot. Congratulations, really great shot. Um, Another great one here from Yucca. Um, how creative is that? We're on the space shuttle, aren't we? <clears throat> We're in outer space. I don't know where, I don't know where uh, but we are in outer space. And it's just such a cool idea. Where on earth did you think of the idea of putting your camera inside the washing machine? I just love it. But again, I'm going to go, I'd like to see it. A little bit brighter <laughs> what do you think guys I, I just think that little bit more brightness brings the eye a little more to life if you could have got a little more depth of field just so that um, your poor assistant models eye was sharp as well I think it would have helped but I also know that could be nearly impossible in such a confined environment because when you're very close to the point of focus, your depth of field shrinks down to a little tiny bit. <clears throat> As any of you guys who were on the focal length webinar would know, <clears throat> or on any of the UBC, etc. Uh, I think it's a really great shot, a little bit more depth of field, and I think it just needed to be just that little touch brighter. Norman has just said face brighter and the rest darker. Yeah, good point, maybe, yeah. Um, Anyone else said anything about that? A gradient that brightens the face would be better. Looks more futuristic, brighter, says Matthew. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Linda Cardona thinks my monitor is dark. <laughs> All I can say is it, it is calibrated. I even manage the light levels in the room. Because that's another thing. If the sun comes out and your room is lit by lots of daylight, then what happens is the pupils in your eye, they, they shrink, they get smaller. And that makes the monitor appear darker because the room's got brighter, your eyes have compensated, and it makes the monitor seem dark and the other way around. If your room sort of suddenly gets darker, 
then the monitor appears brighter. And it's a really difficult thing. The guys who do the real accurate uh, image processing, they control the environment. They always have consistent light. When I used to work in television, the edit suites, they all had exactly the same light level in them. There were no windows, everything was utterly controlled. So the room didn't change in its brightness or the color temperature of the light or anything. Um, Jamie, I'm not going to spec savers, but nice idea, thank you. Um, moving on, moving on. I'm, I've got a bit of a theme going on here. Oh, you guys are gonna hate me in a while. Olivia, I really, really liked this image. I loved the shapes. I love the shapes. It's so beautifully done. And okay, I, I think you gather I have a predisposition for slightly brighter <laughs> images because I've done this quite a lot this week. What do you think, guys? The brighter or the slightly darker? It really isn't my monitor, I promise you. I'm very careful about such things. Um, but it is a beautifully put together image. The light is really, really, really subtle. I like the, I'm, I'm not even sure where it is, are those stairs going on in the dark area? But I love the way you've got beautiful, beautiful tones of gray from white through to, to, to black in that little line, angular shadow in what I guess are stairs or something. Um, beautifully, really, really well spotted, Olivia. Um, I'm gonna stop banging on about brightening up pictures in a minute. Um, but I just want to talk to Srinivas because I love this picture. I really do. I, it's got a real wow factor to it. The shapes and the lines going on and that little human form, very, very small, sort of center just below the middle. I, I think it's a very, very powerful picture. There's a couple of things that would have helped it in my opinion. Uh, one is what I've been banging on about. <laughs> I just felt it could have done with being that little bit brighter, just to make the, the whites a little whiter. Um, it's so difficult in this situation. If that person who's walking, I guess, across, I love the way you've caught them right in the middle. I, that takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of skill, capturing a decisive moment like that. If, 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 you might have been able to get them to sort of come closer to the railing so it was a bit more light on them. It would really improve it. But look, I'm being super picky, really super picky. With everything we've talked about, I'm being really, really picky at the moment. Um, we're going to come on to some others in a minute, but I'm just going through some and being very, very picky because you guys are producing really high level stuff. And that's why I'm being picky with you. I'm not going to be picky, quite so picky with everyone because there's some more coming up. This one. Now, where are we? I think you said you weren't sure about this. I can't read it. Sorry, poor old man. Eyes are old and bent. Matthew, I really like this. The second I saw it, I was just drawn to it. It's like, oh, that's different. That's thinking outside the box. That's a little bit nuts and mad. And then when I saw it larger on you know, my monitor when I expanded it, again, I thought, hmm, could do anything a tiny bit brighter. <laughs> it's a good job you can't throw things at me, you know. But I did think it could do it being a little tiny bit brighter, but also it's not quite sharp. I think you've got camera shake going on here. It doesn't look like it's an out of focus thing. I think it's tiny movements of the camera. You maybe shot it with a tripod, but if the tripod was maybe on carpet, they will still vibrate. It could be it's a little dark because you were thinking, I don't want to slow the shutter speed down anymore in case you get camera shake, but it has got a bit of camera shake in it. Uh, a faster shutter speed would have helped. And then maybe if you'd either used a wider aperture, if you could, if you'd hit the end of your apertures, then a higher ISO would allow a bit more light. And I think it could have been possibly a bit brighter. Anyway, I took the liberty of brightening it up and sharpening it. Um, and I don't know what anyone else thinks, whether you prefer the slightly brighter one. Let's ignore the sharpening thing for the moment. I'm just on my banging on about my thing about brightness and uh, stuff like that. Um, if it was sharp, it's really good. I love the light. I love the shapes. I love the way you've been so bold as to put things at opposite ends of your shot and having an empty space in the middle. I also 
read that somehow it got rotated the wrong way so boom here we go and I really get it I love your pre-visualization the way you kind of saw it is that way up and you're so right Matthew I, I really really like this it's a gray abstract really nice light just sort of washing across from the side that gorgeous gentle gray the fact that you're only using a neutral gray a blue and a red blue and red best mates opposite colors on the color wheel blue and red they just work together <clears throat> it's a very very bold and creative thing that you've done there I love it this I think is a wonderful shot by I, don't, I think it's Lenny or Lenny. <clears throat> um, that's such a great thing, you know, catching the rainbow off a CD or a DVD and putting some little droplets of water on it. Really, really great. Beautifully executed. I even like the flare on the left. It, it somehow adds something, in my opinion. Um, I don't know about you guys. Uh, how you feel about the flare because there is a, a very divided camp here isn't there there's the camp that says flare is bad wicked and wrong you should go to jail for an indeterminate period of time and then there's others that go hey I like that it adds a mood and a feeling guys what do you think how do you feel about flare I'd really like to know when I look away I'm looking at my other monitor just to see um, for me I mean don't get me wrong flare doesn't work all the time in this one, I, I really think it does. There's something to do with, you know, how a DVD or a CD works. Um, I really like that whole, you know, it's light, isn't it? it? It's light on a disc creating sound and vision and the bit of flair somehow adds to it. Um, I've seen a couple of comments come through that say you don't like the bit in the middle. And um, yeah, Lenny, that was my actual complaint here, I think. A little bit tighter composition boom and I just think you'd have got it I think your subject the really clever bit the beautiful bit of your picture is having an argument with the edge of the disc and that little bit in the bottom left corner and the bit in the middle that sort of gold piece there um, but what a beautiful shot really well done uh, we've got a couple more on this vein for the moment. Uh, this one by Robert Ransley. I really like this. It's like, you know, there's a lot of work gone into, well, all of these, all of them. But I really like that. This, this, it's, it's very simple, and yet there's something that just works. And, and it kind of gives me a little buzz looking at all sorts of things like this. Because although, you know, you created that shot, as many of you have for this challenge, I get it. Um, it's like, what's going on in your head that made you think of that? What, what was happening? What were the, the little neural pathways in your brain doing when you thought, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some tubes. I'm going to stick one out at some different side. But, oh, let's put an orange ball up there. Really, really imaginative. Um, any of you guys that are struggling with, with the creative side of things you know th these are the sorts of things to look at what did i just see here mike lubke not sure what i'm supposed to be looking at in this one i get it and of course as i said earlier you can't please all the people all the time some of you guys will go you know what i just don't like it and that's completely fine in fact you know go on just give us a yeah not keen by all means comment on it you know and robert don't i know you won't take offense you've been around the lockdown group we we know that it's okay to have an opinion it's just how we express it but then there's going to be other people who would go, oh, yeah, I get it. It does something for me. Um, don't feel we are all a bit wacko, Mike, says Gail. Well, I know that. You're hanging out with me. Um, but I think it's a really, really interesting, interesting and nice shape. Um, there was, to me, one thing in the composition. And again, I am being very picky. I hope this will do it smoothly because... There is a distraction and I find that the brown tube at the bottom to be a distraction. Gorgeous light wrapping around it. I love the way it's catching the light, but it's just a little tiny bit too strong. And the little triangular piece of green right in the bottom corner, it just seemed not quite to work. So again, I took the liberty of taking it away to see what would happen. What do you think, guys? 
Um, I'll just do a bit of before and after. So we have the original with a little bit of green in the bottom left corner. I really want to know what you think. It's such a tiny, tiny, subtle change, but I truly think it helps the picture. And I think it takes us to those tubes in the orange. The orange to me works, orange and green, they're, they're kind of opposite to and, and the gray. Um, and the only reason I really pointed this one out is sometimes just a minute, if you're using a zoom, a minute turn of that zoom ring, just increasing the focal length by what would the difference be here? Oh, I don't know, it's probably no more than two or three millimeters. Just a minute bit of zoom. And it would just make a world of difference. It's that learning to look all the way around the outside. Um, would I have noticed it in the camera? I can't say, I don't know. Um, but you know, when you, when you look in the back, it's always worth having a really good look around. Uh, but it's a great shot, it really is. It's a lovely shot. Robert, great job. I really like this idea as well from Sarah, Sarah Shandy. Is it Shandy or Shandle? I apologize, eyes are old and bent. I think you've got a really good idea here. I really like the way you've just got that little shape of, of the seat of the chair. You don't need to see the whole chair to know it is a chair. I like the shadows that are falling in the middle from a, from a hanging basket. Um, I like the, the slats of the timber and the shadows going on there. There's a lot of textures and things going on. Now I'm guessing that top black angular shadow is probably the eaves of the house. <clears throat> um, and I guess it's one of those, do I include it, do I not include it? But again, just like with Robert's image, I could not help myself. And so I thought, what would that look like without it? Um, personally, I think it's a lot stronger without it. I love the way you've got all your lines straight. I haven't done anything to mess about straightening it up. I just love the way you've got all that so straight. Again, guys, what do you think? With the uh, triangular shadow at the top, because, you know, again, I'm just doing this because I want everyone to see there isn't a right and a wrong. Um, is this a shadows photo? No, Glenn, we're past shadows now. We are in shapes. Um, or without the heavy shadow at the top. Um, again, it's, it's very similar to Robert's image, you know, maybe just a tiny little bit more cropping in with a tiny little extension of focal length would have made a world of difference. I'm also intrigued by how you got into this position to shoot it. You did a lot of work, Sarah. Congratulations and well done. Right, you can see I've done a few examples of, of the same things. First we were looking at exposure, now we're kind of looking at minute changes in focal length, just a little tiny change in composition and how it can make a world of difference. So I've got another example for you, just one more. This one from Alan, Alan Hedge. I really liked that idea, Alan. Really liked that idea. It's, it's a really nice idea using the sweep of the bonnet of the car. To, to sort of curl round. We, we've got lots of blue and yellow going on in there. Blue and yellow, again, they are best, best mates. They love each other and they dance together because they're opposite each other on the color wheel. Very, very creative idea. But once again, I just can't help but feel it would be improved had we not got the, the kind of the edge, the lower left-hand edge sort of behind the lockdown logo, if that wasn't there. If it was just in that tiny little bit closer, let me just cut between them for you again so you can have a look. But technically, yeah, it's, it's perfectly executed. Great light, great exposure, great depth of field because if you're shooting into a reflection, you've got to allow for the distance of the reflection as well, you know, or sometimes you can think, right, the bonnet's sharp, all mm, the houses are, are unsharp that are in the reflection. Um, but it just needs, Tiny attention to detail, tiny, tiny little changes can make a world of difference. And you know, I hope you guys have found that useful. So let's just have a look at another one, which I just thought would be really useful because I love this idea. Nickat, I really liked your idea here. Uh, an old abandoned outhouse, does this still qualify? Absolutely it qualifies for, for shapes. 
and angles and things really really qualifies very very well I think the and I also by the way I love the leaves down in the bottom left corner because you've got all this structural man-made rigidity and that strong angle coming across the corner and then you've got those beautiful little natural leaves in the bottom catching the light however I think it could have been stronger with an, an image this graphic maybe if you came round to the left a little so you were sort of facing straight on into that doorway because then it wouldn't have this sort of slightly distorted look also kind of the, the doors kind of leaning off sorry that way isn't it it's kind of leaning to the side a little bit and I'm not sure I'm guessing maybe you were trying to get the bottom you know of the the, door, the step of the door you know the lower line of mortar straight but that's had the effect of making the door lean over because of perspective you're looking at an angle so these things are going to go away and they're going to taper as they go away it's a perspective thing maybe if it was shot absolutely square I think it would have looked pretty good actually I really do great idea uh, let's have a look oh Jules Wiggs just said he thinks there was he or she sorry thinks there's an updated version that's one of those things guys I'm ever so sorry sometimes when things get updated I miss it because I've gone through and I've gone right yes I've got that one um, so yeah there is a danger with updating later that uh, also of course I might pick you twice <laughs> be good with it so apologies the foibles of being human um, Joan I really liked your idea here too. I think you've made some great shapes using those wine glasses. Really great shapes, very, very clever, just to use the highlight on the very edge of the glass. It's, it's, it's almost like a light painting, it's really great. But I feel it could have done with a little more room. I just feel like they're kind of trapped between the top and bottom of the frame. Remember the negative space week? Maybe not quite full negative space, but I just feel maybe a little bit of room around them. So they had a bit more room to breathe. Might have helped. But beautifully done. Really clever. Beautiful bit of, bit of lighting. Um, Sue, Sue Wilshire just said, yeah, dark though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, but I think that's part of its charm. Maybe it could have been a touch brighter. I don't know. You'll be relieved now I didn't put this one in a Photoshop to see what that would look like. I ran out of time. Um, but nonetheless, I, I think it's a great idea. Perhaps a little bit more room to breathe looking around it. Ah, Ken. Ken Robinson. This was something I was very intrigued by because there's some great shapes going on in your shed. Um, I like the timber work. There's some really nice light on that timber work. Can you see, you know, the corners are all, all really clearly defined because there's some great light in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, because they might be your prized collection, but I'm not sure the Toby jugs add anything to it. I think maybe if you'd explored just the light and shade on, on the timber of the shed, but without the Toby jugs, I think it might have helped. I know they're your prized collection. You maybe never speak to me again, but I just think it might have helped. There's also a little bit of an angular, slightly strange thing, like they're, they're falling over backwards a bit. And I'm wondering if you had the same thing as we had with the doorway earlier of trying to get that lower shelf straight. But because of the perspective to do that, you've had to tilt the camera and then it made everything sort of fall over. Um, but yeah, I really like your idea. There's some great light in there. Give it another go, Ken. Give it another lash, maybe, you know, but just, just try exploring just some of the shapes and corners. There's a lot of shapes and corners here with Phil Saunders Hall's image. And I really liked it. It's very, very, very nicely done. And the fact that we have got a tapering of perspective in this one, I think actually helps it. I'm a bit of a one for going straight in on a graphic shape. But in this case, I kind of like the fact that it's not square on. Can anyone guess what I am going to say? Just put in a comment, please. What do you think I might say about this? Because it's beautifully executed technically, great exposure, really beautifully uh, set up. But Glenn, I agree with you, yeah. Um, yeah, 
the edges are clipped. Wow, look at you guys go. <laughs> I love doing stuff with you lot, I really do. Um, yeah, Phil, I think maybe a little bit more room on those corners so we could see a little bit more of whatever it is that shape is on. I don't know if it's a ceiling light, I, I have no idea. Um, but it's beautifully lit, beautifully exposed, beautifully put together technically. It's really nicely composed. And again, I'm being super picky with you because of these things. A little bit more space on the edges, I think, might have helped. This one really caught my eye too, Karen. Karen Fraser. What a great shape. And what great use of light. Um, you know, you've obviously taken on board some of the things we've been talking about, how your eye goes to the brightest part of the picture um, you know and there are several bright bits but because of that shape and the spiral it just pulls you into that wonderful geometrical mash mishmash of, of, of triangles going on in the middle really really nicely done my only issue really is a compositional one um, I know the highlights are a bit burnt mm. Maybe you could have gone slightly darker in this case. I don't know. I don't know where you are in your journey. Uh, if, you, if you're shooting raw, you could probably just pull those highlights down a little bit. So I don't expect they look quite that strong to your eye. If you're not, don't worry about it. Don't go there. Don't think it's something you've got to go and do. Get your head around some other things first. To me, it's the bottom right hand corner of the glass. It's just distracting. I think with a little more care, just maybe a little lower with the camera and just looking all around the edge again and get it all kind of nicely lined up because that little bit on the corner, it's not quite right. I feel the camera does need to be square on and, and flat. I think the camera was sort of at this angle and your, and your glass is kind of here like that. I think if you could have come down a little and got straight onto it and then zoomed in a fraction to lose that bit down in this corner down there, it would have helped. But great job. Um, Oh yes, there was something in the comment with this, which, which made me look at it, and I'm not sure if I can read it from here. Um, how dedicated are you? I felt I needed to do something at least. That was it. Not creative, working on that. Because <laughs> you have got something here, Sherry. You really have. Um, there's really simple colours. An apple and a pear. What could be more simple? Again, think about what we were just saying about the glass. It's a different camera angle. I think maybe had you found a way to get a little lower down and look straight at them, maybe not such a textured surface. It's a very, forgive me, normal angle to be looking at an apple and a pear. We often see them at that angle if they're on the table in front of us. And when we see things from a usual and normal angle, our brain goes, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, seen that already. <clears throat> Very often the best things are when we look at something from a peculiar angle, something where we don't normally see something from, um, and that really, really helps. I think a less textured surface, if you could have had a little bit of gentle backlight, side light, you maybe you're not in that place yet, and that's cool. Everybody, everybody in the world has to learn this stuff one piece at a time. But I like your idea, it's nice and simple. I think a less textured surface, and absolutely, Completely, congratulations for being dedicated. I love that. Well done. Just for getting stuck in there. Tony, I like your idea. I get that you've got a lot of shapes going on here. Uh, I think that the real problem is, is you've got too many shapes going on here. Um, I reckon if you could have gone in a little closer with certain things, you'd, you'd have probably found something a little more interesting. Um, you certainly got a lot of shapes, but I think you could have found something with a bit more interesting light, get rid of some of it. it it's too confusing. Um, personally, I find the crop uncomfortable too. I'm guessing you cropped like that to get rid of a boiler or, or something else that, that's in shot. But looking at that little shadow on the wall, on the left, about halfway up, there's some quite nice light going on in this gentle directional side lit. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just read something. I'll tell you in a minute. There's nice gentle side lit, side light going on in there. And I think maybe if you could have got a little closer, maybe shot against that light slightly, you'd have got some nice shapes in that copper pipe. 
you could have probably got a nice repeating pattern of, of copper pipe, copper pipe, you know, four copper pipes with some nice light blending around them. Um, I don't know if he's disappeared. Uh, yeah, he's gone now. Uh, nice plumbing, but somebody wrote on there just now, you know, there's a bit too much solder on one of those joints. So <laughs> tickled and distracted me. Um, Chuck Christ. Beautiful light here. Beautiful, really, really interesting contraption. Uh, I didn't read all the comments later on to find out what it actually is. Um, there's some gorgeous light and some gorgeous shapes. Technically, you have executed that really, really well. Lots of front to back sharpness, which is, is what this would need. It's all in focus, perfect exposure for those dark highlights and shadows. Contrast is absolutely bang on. But it's just a little too busy. <clears throat> Not quite sure where to look. We kind of go to, you know, the center circular shape and then I'm a bit lost. Where am I going now? I don't know. I'm sure there are probably quite a lot of shapes and images and beautiful little pieces of light in here. But very often less is more. Oh, Sue said it's a World War II gun. Oh, it's an artillery piece. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I, I kind of get it a bit now. My father was in the Royal Artillery. Believe it or not, in the First World War, he was 70, no, he was 69 when I was born. He was doing well, wasn't he? Really beautifully executed technically. I just think less could be a little bit more here. And a similar thing going on with this one. Ruth, nice idea, nice idea. Again, you've got your exposure right, and that's a tricky exposure. There's great details on those bendy, you know, lampy things. Um, I really, really like the little highlights going on. Uh, it's really nice, but I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure where to look first. Um, I think there's possibly a little too much going on. I'm not sure what it needs. But I think with the, maybe a bit more experimentation, try some different angles, maybe looking down or maybe, you know, put a bit of a, a weird angle on it, get closer to the, you know, the little lighty bendy things, don't know what they're called, where the highlights are. Great effort and technically very well done. <clears throat> Linda Windsor, you're up next for a drubbing. <laughs> I'm absolutely not drubbing anyone, guys, as well. That's just my sense of humour. That's English humour for those of you that aren't English. We tend to be a bit brutal with each other at times, but usually the more brutal we are, what we're actually saying is, I really like you. I know, we're weird. <clears throat> Linda Windsor. What a lovely idea. What lovely shapes. Uh, great light, really well spotted. And again, look at the work you put into getting in the right place. I really like those overlapping circles with the, the timber going straight across. Um, guys, any, any advice, anything, anyone can guess what I might say? I'd really love to see what, what, have, you, what have you spotted? What do you think this might benefit from in a shot like this? <clears throat> what do you think? I'm just waiting to see if we get some comments. Love the shadows, love it. Yeah, I love it too. I think they're really nice crop focus. Ivana, you are on the right track. Um, right, oh, here they come. They're going really fast now. Can I catch up with them? A little bit more negative space. No, I think the composition's lovely. Um, I really do. I think the exposure's perfect. <clears throat> all that stuff and just keep an eye open Michael Ranger if I hope you smoke because you've just won the fat cigar depth of field um, yeah Moose Harper you just hit it too yeah absolutely and oh, a couple of others um, yeah other than that I think it's really great <clears throat> I think it needed a little more sharpness, a little more depth of field, so that both of those tables are sharp and in focus. Depth of field can be really useful for guiding us to a place where, where you want the viewer to look, absolutely, um, completely. But I, and in some cases that works, and in some cases it doesn't work so well. 
I think maybe had you managed to focus on, on the first table, the bigger one, higher up, which is, just seems to me to be slightly brighter, and because it's so strong in the foreground, I think that would have grabbed us first, and then we'd have tumbled down table, table, onto the decking. Uh, if you could have got that one sharp, used a much smaller aperture to try and get it sharp all the way through, I just think it would, have, it, it would just really benefit from it. But a great... Um, a great shot. Said he needs a cat. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I wish we were all in the same room doing it. Uh, great shot, Linda. Great shot. Um, Roger fell. <clears throat> now, Roger, I know you when you took it with your phone. I get it. Um, and you're quite right. Clouds are shapes. And I think you've got some great clouds there. The problem here is we've got too many other things going on around the clouds. They're really quite nice. Uh, I know you only had your phone with you at the time and the best camera is the one you got with you. But I can't help wondering to myself, what, did those, what were those clouds like right above you? Maybe there weren't any. Forgive me if I've got this wrong. So I can see there's a great big blue hole going on. <clears throat> towards the top right U7 blockers you know exactly what I'm talking about um, maybe if you could have looked straight up at the sky you might have got some great patterns from right underneath the clouds looking straight up I don't know <clears throat> if you had you might have been able to just you know do a pinchy zoom thing I don't know which way it goes not very good at that um, and just got in a little tighter onto some clouds not at that angle but maybe you're straight up little tip for everyone by the way unless you know um, already if you look straight up into a blue sky it's much much bluer than it is when you look at the horizon um, yeah I see a few people saying it doesn't really look like a garden I think it says but I can't read it that you could see it out the backyard or something forgive me I can't see it or anyway Let's have a look at the next one, Michael, because I like this one too. You've got something really cool going on here, but I think there's a little too much. I think it could have worked. Maybe if, if the bench and the blue bottle were a little further away from the wall, but the wall is a bit of a problem because it's got all those textures and scratchy marks in it and they're just that bit too confusing and, and they kind of draw you away from the blue bottle even though the blottle, bottle, blottle, I don't even drink for ages. I don't even drink. Um, the blue bottle is very strong. I think had it come away from the wall a bit, um, it might have helped. Had it come away from the wall quite a lot, uh, you know, the whole thing, and you used a longer lens and a smaller aperture, you could have probably made all that background go all soft and blurry. Um, and I think that would have really helped. The other thing to me is the bottom of the legs of the bench. They're right on the bottom of the frame. Um, again, just, just really careful attention to detail. It's uncomfortable having them there. We want to see what they're sitting on, not just sort of like, boom, they've crashed into the side of the picture, crashed into the bottom of the picture. But yeah, great idea, and the blue does stand out, but the background, too distracting. Um, I also can see there's a lot of potential in this one, Hazel Fox. Um, there's some really nice light being scooped up by those shapes, but you've got a little bit too much going on in there, Hazel. Um, those lovely sculpted things, they're really great. I'm just wondering, had you managed to get a little closer Again, a bit less is more. Maybe explored them from some very odd angles, you know, like looking straight down or from the side or, or mm, I'm not sure. But having, you know, the round bit in the bottom corner and then the cloud and the sky, it, it's a bit too much going on. But really nice idea. We've got a similar thing going on here, Paul. Um, really nice idea. <clears throat> I did a video with something very similar to this some time back. Um, what guys what do you think the main distraction is here what is it that, that kind of takes us away from what is actually a really interesting and rather nice shape in some quite nice light really interested um, 
Oh, it doesn't have to be minimalist. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. It was through clouds. Yeah, the clouds. It's the clouds. I kind of like the blue sky. Um, it's the clouds. I think had you got the sort of the gunmetal grey against the blue, it would have been really cool. But having that swirly cloud shape there, it just kind of messes it up. And this is one of the great frustrations, of course, with photography. You want a nice bit of blue sky, and there isn't one. Uh, landscape photographers are some of the most patient people in the world because they all pre-visualize and know what weather conditions and light conditions they need for a specific image. And they could go months, well, let's say on the best, best outcome would be 10 minutes before they got it. But, you know, my friend Tom Mackey has told me many tales of how he has gone back to locations over many years and sometimes spent days waiting for the right weather conditions. And it hasn't happened. I mean, he is a lonely, lonely man. He doesn't have a life like most people. <clears throat> and so, you know, you guys are more normal. Ian, I liked your idea here too. There's something really quite catchy with this and I'm not entirely sure whether these are shadows or whether you've got a, a Photoshop thing going on here on layers. I'm beginning to think it might be the latter. To me, there's again a little bit too many shapes going on, even though there's some great light going on on your <clears throat> you know, cleaner. I love the light on the cable on the flex where it's sort of hanging down there. Um, but I think maybe had it could it have been if it is on a wall and you're using two different light sources to light it, that's really clever. But I think it could it be further away? It needs a little bit of a distance to make it work. Nice idea, nice idea. It certainly caught my eye, but I'm not sure if it's two light sources or whether you've got a Photoshop thing going on. It doesn't matter if you have, I'm not fussed, but I just feel that that handle just needs a bit of separation. Um, Martin, this is a really lovely shot. Guys, what do you think? What do you think this might have needed? Just to kind of help it along a little bit, because I love it and I know it's very soft and it's very pastel, but I, I still kind of like it and I, I just think it works. Uh, I know you say the maple leaves, I'm not entirely sure what you're growing in your garden, sir. Um, but Ed Hicks is saying brighter, more contrast, brighter, more space, says Moose. A bit more contrast. There's a lot of contrast comments coming in here, brighter. Um, I think it is sharp, Bob, but it looks okay on mine. Um, no, I, uh, to me, I, I don't mind the soft contrast. It's that plant behind the lower leaf. It, it's, it, to me, it's, it's kind of spoiling it. And I know I'm being picky again because, you know, Martin, you've done a great job. You, you've got a great thing going on here. And so if I'm going to help you, I'm going to push you. <clears throat> Lose the shadow at the bottom, yeah. Um, there's, there's another plant going on in the background and, it, and it's, it's fighting, it's just colliding because the rest of the space is so clean. Having that, that bit at the bottom doesn't quite work. Maybe it would have worked better if you just decided to leave out the bottom leaf. You could have kind of gone for a long stem, you know, literally just above the bottom leaf <clears throat> and kept it very graphic. But other than that, really great job. Oh, do you know what? I can't remember who it was who said this in the group earlier. Somebody said, wouldn't it be good if we could have, you know, someone going around with a tray of ice creams at this point? Because I'd love to. Wouldn't it be cool? We could just sit around and have an ice cream for five minutes. Stretch break. Um, Cynthia Ellis, another really kind of interesting idea. You've got some very interesting light and some interesting pipes and some in interesting shapes. You've done the exposure well. Um, but you've got just a little bit too much going on inside your picture. That's all I could say. Um, I'm glad you guys want some ice cream too. That's really cool. <laughs> Second guessing me has become fun. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a new sport. I love you guys. <clears throat> Peter Kinver. 
I really like this. Now here we've got a completely different scenario where we're looking at a much bigger space, but there are so many angles and corners and shapes going on in that space. And there's some beautiful, beautiful light happening in here too. That it just caught my eye, certainly. I don't know what you guys think. Um, <laughs> I could have stopped reading your comments. You're making me laugh. I don't know what you guys think. It's beautifully put together. All your verticals are straight. Everything's nice. You've got great shadows coming towards. I love that um, little highlight on the floor with the reflection. Who said that? Sharon Grigg. Better without the stuff in the window. All right. Um, yeah. I can see where you have, and I'm guessing you shot this in Lightroom. It's a raw file. Um, I can see where you've done some work on the window to get the view outside to match. This is one of the things we're doing RAWs, guys. Um, RAW files have tons of information. When you take a picture of something bright, the camera makes it much more contrasty than your eye sees it. Because I bet your life, Peter, you were stood there, you could see the view outside fine and what was going on inside. But the shot with the camera, particularly if you just shot a JPEG and let the camera deal with the post-production, you'd probably have a completely burnt out window or just the right exposure in the window and a very, very dark interior. So to make it look natural, you've done a bit of Lightroom work. The problem is I can see the brush strokes in the window, I think. They might be reflections. I have considered this, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they look to me like it's a little bit of, of brush work needed a little bit of tidying up because there's, there's a bit of a halo around the edges. Um, there's a useful tool in Lightroom, by the way. If you hold down your shift key and do clicks, and use a very, very hard edged brush and go around the edges, it will draw perfectly straight lines. So you don't have to worry about that. But also I think you've made the content of the window too dark. To have the window, to have the outside in the garden a little bit bright would really work because you've got that lovely bright highlight on the floor. And to have the outside bright too, it kind of works. This doesn't work really because it's like you've got a bit of a gloomy dark outside, but a bright highlight on the floor. They don't quite come together. <clears throat> oh dear. Uh, I hope we're still working all right. Because I'm seeing a very, very bad shot on this laptop. Are we good? Are we good? I hope we are. I think I'm going to shut that one down and hope. <clears throat> um, I hope we're still working. Can somebody just give me a shout out? Looks good. All good. All good. Good. At least two of you are good on my spare laptop. It just suddenly kind of went horrible. So, um, okay, thank you guys. Right, I can't see your comments now, which is probably a good thing. Um, let's have a little look here at this one. Ken Powell, this caught my eye very, very quickly. I have to say it really did. I saw that and just thought, hmm, that is interesting. Um, there's some great shapes going on there. There's some really cool stuff. The only thing is your star anise and your, your little herbs and nutmegs or whatever they are, um, they're in different light to the cup, which is beautifully shot. The cup and the tea, the little light catching in the meniscus, the light on the rim of the cup, the angle from which you've shot it is absolutely bang on perfect beautifully done. I don't know what that background is, but it's really nice. I'm guessing it's a little brushed, polished stainless steel top or something. I'm not sure about the, the star anise because, you know, they're very obviously photoshopped. It, it's kind of like, I like the one on the right, almost, that's in the T. It's almost like it's starting to sink, but it looks like you've done a quick selection tool and it's missed bits and it's caught bits of background. But the biggest problem is they're in different light to the cup, so they look very superimposed. It is kind of fun. I get it. It is kind of fun. Um, and your photography skills in capturing the elements is great, but I think a little bit more care in the um, Photoshop end. Where are we now? Where are we at? Oh, we're doing all right. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm going at the right speed for you guys. Okay, what do we got next? We've got... Danny, because this is beautiful light. Again, technically so well executed. We've got some really nice light. We're, we're kind of 
just going across those shapes and curves of, of the guitar. Um, guys, tell me what you think. Where, where, where do you look? What, what, what do you know where to look? <clears throat> where do you know where, do you know where to look in this shot? Because I don't, and I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Jill, I'd have been proud of this one too. I, d I totally get it, unless you're talking about the Star and East one. Uh, yeah, get it. And of course, we're all proud at different levels, aren't we? I'm just being your coach and pushing you. Um, sorry, Silent Cooter, I can't read your comments because I, I, they're too small on my screen. Um, it is really nice. Yeah, it could do with a little bit more depth of field on, on the screw, but it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, Basil, I totally get it. I'm bouncing between the strings and I don't know what it's called, the, 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 the shape. In, in, in you know on, on to the left they're both kind of equally strong so I'm not sure which one to look at first uh, again less is more maybe I, I don't know what you'd need to do you probably need to somehow shade the light on the strings <clears throat> so we look at the the <laughs> the is that really what it's called an F hole <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> thanks for tidying that up Charles it is um, yeah Right, stop it. Back in the room. Um, yeah, the F hole, and then, and then just shading the strings a little bit so there wasn't quite so much light on there. It would give us somewhere to look first, or possibly the other way around. Shade the, the F and then, and then have a little more light on the strings. You could just do it by playing with a light. You could probably do it with your hand, you know, by creating... Look, look, look at the shadow on my shirt. Can you see this? There's a, there's a shadow. Look, here we go. Look, I'm putting a shadow on my face. Can you see that? Just by doing something like that, you may have been able to give the viewer somewhere to look. <clears throat> That's often all it takes. This one I really like too. I think because I think it needs that, the stone on the right, just that right hand edge needs to be lost. I don't mind seeing a little bit of stone on the right hand edge, you know, the really shadowy part, but where it's catching the light on, on the corner and we got one bit sharper and one bit not so sharp, um, darker and one bit brighter. I think maybe if you'd cropped it straight down that, that corner of the stone, it would work better because the stone is fighting with that gorgeous light you've got on the flag there and, and the cap. But technically, again, perfectly exposed, really well lit, very, very well executed. Careful with that, that bit in the background because to me, it doesn't seem to quite work. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next one again. This is another one which, again, I think is technically really very good. I love your use of of blue, of just using blue. The light's quite interesting too. Uh, quite like your crop. I quite I quite like the way you've cut into them a bit. But if you're going to do something with very geometrical shapes, you've got to be so careful to get them nice and nice and straight Carl. Um, it's like they're just a little bit like that and just a bit just a bit going like that. Um, I think just a you know, little twist of the camera just to get them nicely lined up would have worked because I like your background. I know there's some interrupting lines down the back sort of disrupting the symmetry but I kind of like that. Does anybody remember that that video I did with the twigs sticking out in the corner of the picture looking out across that lake drove half of you completely nuts. Get rid of those twigs. I like that interrupting two vertical lines that are interrupting but it's not quite straight. If you could just get it all lined up you've got great light and technically very well executed. Kevin Hind. Yeah, it is Kevin Hind. I thought this was fab. It's so beautifully simple. Um, I'm going to go on my high horse and go, I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. I think it's a bit dark. Um, when cameras get pointed at things that are white, and I'm guessing it was white, uh, the camera thinks the world is grey because it doesn't know how much light is landing on something. So when it sees something that is predominantly white, it will go, oh, I need to darken that down a bit. Um, and it makes white things go grey. 
and conversely it will make black things go grey too it would do it in either direction it's another reason for needing to know how to do manual exposures and understand that the camera will often get things wrong um, but I do really 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 like this there's just one thing that's really bugging me uh, does anybody want to put in a little comment as to what you think it might be um, and I'm not saying I'm right please don't think I'm right you could be doing this on purpose just to, to sort of disrupt the symmetry um, while I wait for some comments I'm just going to say someone said personally I would like it without the big triangular shadow on the bottom right yeah again everybody has different different ideas personally I love the big heavy shadow on the right yeah Dean I'm with you uh, anyone else saying the same thing it's the yeah George Baker I'm with you it's the little shadow on the left Rianne I, I agree um, yeah, lots of you have said it. It's that little shadow on the left being cut off. I just feel it needs to be there. Because what you've got going on in this, probably subconsciously, I don't know. You've heard me talk about triangles and the number three. Very, very powerful number is three. Um, you've got the three rectangles. You've got the three sides of that dark, strong triangle on the left. You've got the three shadows, but one of them has just been cut off a bit. I just think if we had one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, we could all go dancing together, couldn't we? <clears throat> but that's that's all. Other than that, I really like it. I think a little brighter, a little more contrast, but just bring back in that little little shadow. Um, just bring back in that little shadow. JOJ, I agree, it is still a really good photo. Please don't think I'm saying it's not. I'm being your coach like your fitness coach if I was your fitness coach and I sat on the running machine with you and just ate bags of donuts I wouldn't be much caught would I I got to make you hurt a little and I hope you're not hurting because I really like what you're doing Denise Hutchinson I loved your idea here because I thought, right at the beginning I thought I hope we get some jigsaw puzzles because there's lots of ways you could do it I did see a couple um, and I really like it. In, in a way, I kind of like your angle that you're coming from. It's different. You've got that triangular shape coming back towards the camera. To me, I just felt it just needed to be a little bit more. Again, if you're going to stick a triangle in there, get a little bit more, you know, angular with it. Does that? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So that it, it's straight. It's a little bit wonky. The gap on the right is a little bigger than the gap on the left. I think you've got to just square it up a bit. I kind of like it. I even quite like the shallower depth of field. I'm being picky. I'm being picky, Denise, forgive me. Um, now you see that first little piece of jigsaw puzzle. It's got the, the reddy orange colors in it. I think maybe had you swapped it for the blue one that's sort of in the middle, just swap those two around because the reddy orange one isn't sharp. But the blue one is i don't mind one being unsharp because it sort of helps us into the picture but i just think if you'd swap those two around and, and got that triangle shape a bit nicer a bit more straight it would have worked really really well but there's some really nice light going on in there so uh, i kind of like it i do i really like it and i love this idea here too ali i think this is ali <clears throat> You've got some very interesting shapes and, and light going on here, but you've got too much happening all at once, my friend. It's just that little bit too busy. Again, I don't know where to look. Contradict me. Anybody who wants to contradict me, please contradict me. This is what it's about. It's about a debate. One of the things I find frustrating with doing this and the webinars a little bit, even though it's fun, compared to my you know, cameras don't take pictures seminar where, you know, you've got a room full of people or at the photography show, there was, I don't know what it was, it's 300 odd people in the room. You know, you can chuck out a question. There's all, the, all this interaction and running around and it's great and it's quite hard to do online. What do you think? Anything, too much to process, a little bit too much to process. Yeah. Patrick, who cares, likes it. And I agree. Great idea, a little bit too busy. Yeah. Because again, you've done something technically really great, Ali. Um, I hope you guys are noticing there's a little theme going on here. There's, there's quite a lot of stuff that's technically very well done. You've got just a bit too much happening and I'm not sure where to look. Um, 
also I don't know whether you turn the jug on its side whether you've turned the shot on its side and to me I, I kind of feel it wants to be that way up don't know but beautifully done technically beautifully done technically now we're going to swap into Donald Donald Daly I think that says this stopped me when I first saw it you know the, the smaller one on, in, on the Facebook page and just thought hmm that's kind of interesting because originally I thought what's going on with that wall it looks like the wall is curved and it's bent and it's not it's the perspective of the shadows coming from the lampshade and I like that it's it's confusing stops makes it make, made, made me think not many things made me think but I think that's seven thoughts I've had this year but I really like it to me it wanted a little bit more light possibly a touch more exposure would have helped but it's just in that corner where, where the shade is hitting the wall it's very black indeed we can't quite see the, the difference between the edge of the shade and the shadow behind it it's just that bit too dark maybe a little bit of white paper or white card you could possibly have bounced a bit of light in there personally i think you got away with just increasing the exposure a bit but it's very strong because we've got some great geometric shapes happening we got that square but then also we got our old friend some triangles banging on here again haven't we look where the, where the where the shade is meeting the wall we've got that black triangle in there and i think if we had a clean edge on it but great idea also i'd love to see a bit more space at the top it's kind of like mm, it's just a bit cramped squeezed in the cupboard but what a fabulous fabulous array of pictures and i hope some of this feedback has been of help for everybody um i try to pick a variety from you know people who've obviously been doing it for a while and are nailing it to, to people who are, you know you're on the beginning of this journey i was at the beginning of the journey too once you know it took me ages to figure out how to use light it took me quite a while to get to fully understand exposure but it's just with practice and practice it comes and so now i'm going to have to go into you guys who are in my shortlist shout outs um, there is nothing wrong with any of these pictures uh, these are the ones that i had in my folder of oh i got it oh oh oh, oh i got it i got it they call it killing your children in uh, writing you write everything down you get all the good bits in there and you think oh but which bits can i not use which are the very best bits and they call it killing your children getting rid of the bits you don't want to because it does hurt it really does there are so many this time let's begin with Ian Knight what a fantastic idea what a fantastic fantastically simple and brilliant and well executed idea Ian to get one of those little pin light torches that cycles through different colors hang it on a piece of string against something black you know so i guess you've got your camera right underneath it oh no, sorry your camera right above it and i guess it must be swinging around the camera i'm not sure how you've done it but you know and then it's it's drawing this this path of light and i don't know whether you've done it shining onto something or whether you've done it looking up and you're, you've got the pen i don't know but it's so great it's so geometric it reminds me of a there was a kid's toy when i was young um, we had you know you put a pen in uh, was it called a spirograph or something somebody might remember but you create these shapes beautifully done beautifully executed bit of technical photography with a great creative vision behind it and a wonderful bit of creating creative thinking spirograph barry johnson thank you oh thank you loads of you yeah fantastic absolutely brilliant what else have we got going on here we have got this one which i really really loved from kirsten wood uh i really do again it's really simple and it takes you on a journey okay we know what it is but it takes you on this journey and by using great light those those highlights on the edge of the stairs they just define it so cleanly and clearly it's not a black and white it is a color but they're very subtle colors the thing that really works here is we've got those hard shapes a load of repeating triangles really haven't we but hard shapes with a cleanly defined edge because of the way the light is landing on it 
Kirsten, I'm also really, you know, like the way you've used a shallow depth of field. So I think had it all been sharp, it may have been a bit confusing to look at because we wouldn't quite known where to look first, where our eye should have gone. Um, but we do. And I like the including that little bit of post on the edge. This is one of those things where I think it's kind of disrupting the symmetry a bit, but I like it. You know, it's that naughty kid at the back of the classroom that, that's generally quite good, but every now and then they just throw a spanner in the works and disrupt things. And I really, really kind of like that. Uh, oh, what do we got here? Ed Hicks is saying, I prefer the focus to be at the top and then a progression of less focus. Okay, so Ed's saying maybe if you brought the focus back up a bit to, to nearer the top. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe you tried these things, I don't know. By the way, I forgot to say, I like that little tiny triangle in the bottom right corner, um, but I think it's a really great shot. I really do. Simple and effective. Isn't it amazing what you can do when you start looking and seeing the world? This, you know, that's why I do what I do. Trying to help people see a bit more beauty in the world by, by seeing, looking and thinking like photographers. Because to be, to be good with your photography, to be fulfilled and satisfied, that's really what it is. It's looking and seeing and thinking things through and finding ways to make the ordinary look interesting. Um, and I think, Carmen, you've done a great job with this. It's such an ordinary thing. But because the light, it's the light. Light is the number one thing. Oh, we got a newel post and, you know, stairs. But look at that beautiful light and the shapes, the way you've put it together. We got that little triangle down just, behind, just sort of behind the, the photo lockdown orange thing. We got another big triangle going on, haven't we? That big old triangle. We've got all those lines. We've got another sort of implied triangle happening in, in the top right hand corner. I know I'm being, ang I'm being very analytical with this and, and it, it, I never do this by the way, guys. I never go, right, I need to find triangles. That's, that's not it. Some of you may, I don't. It's just somehow you look at it and go, Oh, it looks nice like that. I love the way uh, you've tilted the camera, Carmen, and made the top stair rail level perpendicular to the top of the frame. So you've twisted the camera on purpose, which has made the newel post on the right kind of lean in, but it's put it across the top. It's by being interesting. This is really, really creative stuff even though it's just the handrail next to a set of stairs. I love it, I really do, I think it's great. Frank Conlon just said it's a Hitchcock movie. Yeah, I get that, that is it. It's how I feel about that. Very, very, very good indeed. Um, <laughs> this one I think is great too. Daniel Orsek. Um, another example of some really great light very very simple stuff um look at all those wonderfully straight lines you've executed that perfectly you've been unafraid to let the window go really bright and kind of burn out and that's where your eye goes first boom straight into that window but although there's nothing much in the window the fact that it is tram lined between those two verticals and the light is is just pushing you those lines and the light are just pushing you boom into another straight line with that kind of crazy star shaped, I guess it's, it's a light fitting of some sort. It's just so well executed. I really like it. It's, it's really sort of modern arty. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Beautifully done again. You've had that, got that camera absolutely perfectly perpendicular. You, you, I don't know if you're laying on your back, I, I don't know how you've done it, but you've got that absolutely perfectly perpendicular, great light, beautifully executed great piece of seeing Daniel great piece of seeing uh, this is another one which I <laughs> the author of this one Karen toy downs might be surprised to see it in here because uh, I think I saw a comment somewhere yeah she said something about I give up um, I didn't see that I don't read comments until after I decided to put it in a folder or not. Um, what do you see, guys? What do you see? What does it make you think of, particularly those of you in Europe? What is it? Yeah, okay, Jules has beaten us to it. Um, yeah. 
absolutely. My first thought was, how on earth has she done that? When I first saw it before sort of making it bigger, it really did make me stop and go, oh, that's so cool. It looks, I, I'm, I'm there. I'm at the Eiffel Tower. And obviously it isn't the Eiffel Tower. It's not even a model of the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter which way I turn my head to look at it. I can't figure it out. But you've got great shadows. It's like you kind of built on things that we've done already. You know, when we were playing around with shadows and, and now you're playing around with shapes and a bit of negative space as well, allowing that shadow to sit into that negative space. Beautiful light on those wires. Um, if anyone knows what it is, it's a shopping trolley, trolley is it? Okay. Um, <laughs> <pulled> out. <laughs> um, you've got great light going on and that shadow. And the light I find is quite interesting because it's almost like you've got two light sources going on. I, I don't know quite what it is. But great job, Karen. You said I give up. And maybe you just snapped it in a hurry. Maybe you're joking. I don't know. But yeah, you were in my folder and I had to take you out again. I'm sorry. Um, that's why you are in my shortlist shout outs. Another one which caught my eye immediately was this one, Gail. Um, after reading the story, I, I totally get your attachment, but that's not why I chose it. It's just, I, I thought initially you had pinged up that Z key and made it catch the light because we've got all those shapes. And again, just by playing with light, a little bit of light, getting your depth of field right, something as ordinary as a keyboard suddenly becomes interesting. Just boom, we're straight into the Z. There is no question where you're meant to look on this shot. None at all. Uh, the light is coming slightly to the right and sort of up. It's not coming from behind the camera. It's causing a shadow on this side. All the keys are lovely and textured. Uh, I, I really liked it immediately. It caught my attention and, you know, reading what you wrote with it, it, it's, yeah, it's very moving. And I can see why that would be, you know, have an emotional attachment to you. Uh, you'd have an emotional attachment to it. I totally get it. And maybe that's one of the reasons you've done such a great job with shooting it because it is such a powerful thing for you in your life. Katrina. This is cool, isn't it? Isn't it cool? It's like, I want to say noughts and crosses, and I know it isn't, you know, that game where you draw a thing and draw zeros and stuff. Um, it's just fabulously well done. I really, really like it. I can't tell you what you could add or take away. The fact that you haven't really got any reflections going on in this. Um, the way you've got the everything laid out really nicely. The diagonal is fantastic. Uh, what can I say? Great job, Katrina. I'm sorry it <clears throat> didn't go further up the line. I just had to choose something else. Gordon Melrose. This is another very graphic one. I know I like a graphic-y line. I'm just a bit of a wuss like that. Uh, but it's a very, very well executed one. We got very flat, kind of, I think it's quite direct above light. But it works with this sort of subject. Again, I like the way you've used the corners of the frame. Um, I really do. I think it's great. The colors are so simple. It's very, very carefully and precisely executed, technically perfect and a great bit of creative vision and seeing to just bring those things together and to use the space in the way you have. Some of you guys who maybe sort of, you know, there was this thing about, you know, you need to fill the frame with the subject. Hmm. Don't forget, rules are not really rules. They are a guide. It's, it's a way of doing something. It's a good place to start. And with all these things, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It does depend on the shot you want to take. Finally, somebody who I find myself talking about quite often because I'm just really impressed, and that's Clary, our nine-year-old competitor. Because you have this ability to see things and execute them. 
Now, why do I talk about you a lot? Am I, you know, just kind of because you're nine? Yes, <clears throat> because you are able to do something so many adult photographers have struggle, struggle hard with, and that is to just see and play with ideas. And I want to encourage you as much as I can. And, you know, I really do, because you just see shapes and colors and patterns and you, you just do it. The, the other thing with this is that it really got me, I'm quite moved reading this, is what, you know, Tracy, your mum said, that, you know, as soon as you heard the challenge, you knew what you were gonna do, that's a very special and very rare gift. Um, you know, just just play with that idea, just play with it, just play with it, because I think it's great, and I noticed that so many of the comments on this said, wow, it's great, and it is, it's a very, very eye-catching image. <clears throat> so well done again, Clary. Just keep playing with these things. Uh, I would love to meet you in a few years time. Runners up, here they are. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna have a swig of water. Before we look at Alex. <clears throat> I thought this was a really great idea um using smoke to create shapes uh backlighting smoke is just such a really interesting <clears throat> thing in fact on looking at this i kind of thought i wonder why we haven't seen more smoke shots but that's not a criticism of you guys i didn't think of it either um but it is a really calm sort of gentle well executed shot um, and I really like it. Oh, that's interesting. Guys, what do you see in that shape? Because I see someone said, I see a seahorse in the waves and a bulldog. Um, human beings, we, we see things, we see shapes and patterns, definitely. And I'm sure it is, it is something that goes back into our evolutionary history, a frog, a centaur, a rhino. It's an octopus doing a tango. Jenny, take your medication. Um, an old woman, a cowboy falling off a bull, two people dancing, a dog, old father time, rearing horse. Yeah, you see all these things that people see in things. Bizarrely, I'm quite unimaginative. I never see faces in clouds. I never see shapes and things. But great job, Alex. Great job. I look forward to meeting you on a webinar. This one might be controversial, but nonetheless, I just it caught my eye. Nancy Howarth. It's a radiator. And yet you've made it really interesting and got some great shadows and light and angles and corners and shapes going on with that. And I'm really quite bemused how you have done it because the left edge corner is sharp and then it fades off in the middle and falls away again. Um, it's also bent. It's kind of bowing like this. I, I don't know what you, is it, you may, maybe you did it with a phone, with a really, really wide, you know, it's got a wide angle lens and you did it with a phone. I don't know, because all your lines are really great. How come one edge is sharp and one isn't? <laughs> I don't know, if, 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 if you're there, Nancy, I'd love you to pop in a couple of comments. Um, yeah, somebody said sunrise. I got that feeling too. I looked at it and thought, sunrise? I feel sunrise. It's a radiator and I guess you maybe put a light underneath it or something to make that warm orangey glow. Um, I thought it was really creative and I chose it because it gave me a feeling. It connected to an emotion and I felt it's this kind of techno sunrise. I, I don't know. Um, really interesting. Fins are at different levels. Ah, well spotted. Who said that? Sorry, I didn't read your name quick enough. Well spotted. Maybe it's not a radiator at all. Maybe it's something else. But it is like that. The, yeah, really, really interesting. Really interesting. Well done, Nancy. And uh, I want to talk to you about Melanie, Melanie Chalk. I thought this was incredibly creative. There are so many angles and corners and shapes going on in this that it shouldn't work. It should be confusing. It should be hard to look at because there's so much going on, but it isn't and it works. 
Um, I don't know whether you've used um, a zoom blur on this, whether you've got a bit of Photoshop technique going on, whether it's a combination of zoom blur and Photoshop, whether it's all done in camera. It's busy, it's complicated, and it works. And to me, that is a rare achievement, in my opinion. I thought it was quite rare to see something so busy that works. Maybe it's because, you know, the vase with the flower is the sharpest part, and we sort of, well, stand how you made that work. Great shot, congratulations. I look forward to seeing you on a webinar at some point, Melanie. Right, our next runner up. This was a really tough thing to put this in as a runner up. <clears throat> Because when I first saw it, I thought, that's my winner because it's the sort of thing I love. But unfortunately, someone pipped you to the post, Keith Thompson. I think that's so strong. What can I say? Beautifully executed technically. Perfect verticals. You used a longish lens to make it all sort of stacked together. Uh, the moody light, the hands, all of it. it it just works the way the light is falling off as we move into the distance um, i see some people are getting some problems technical problems maybe not i don't know where's my lovely emma where's my best emma <clears throat> everything all right your end em just slack me something um i think it's a great shot i think it's a great shot thanks em i think it's a really great shot beautifully done and initially it was my, ah, that one's got to win, but somebody else, I'm sorry, pipped you to it. And our final runner up is uh, <laughs> Clive Barton. Clive, I know, you're not at home. You're in hospital, mate. We're gonna cut you some slack. But isn't that a great use of light and angles and shapes? So you're lying there in your bed, looking around the room with your phone, thinking, hmm, there must be something. You know me, guys, I'm all about seeing, experiencing the world differently. Cameras are just things that you capture this gorgeous, amazing, incredible, wonderful world around us. And it's surprising how, if we look long enough and don't interrupt our thoughts and practice doing it, we find interesting things in the most unlikely places. I think the light, you've spotted the light coming on this, the angles and the shapes, it's the light that makes it work. The way you have just kind of included the, the bit at the top is very, very creatively done. Um, I think it's really great. Um, I see a few people saying you're having problems. M says we're okay. Looking at my internet signal, it should be good. Uh, yeah, just try refreshing if you're having a problem, guys. Just refresh. It might pop an ad at you because if I got to turn them off for the live, but it should be okay. Um, yeah, great job, great job. So, and now we come to, oh, sorry, uh, Clive. I hope you're okay, mate, and I hope we see you soon, and I hope you're well. So, this week's PLD angles, I can't remember if it was angles or shapes, but here we go. This week's winner, which I just thought was great, it really did get me, and it was a fight between that and, and the hands, uh, is Irene Carson. I just think it's... There's something really calm about it, Irene. I really like the light and the shapes and that sort of, the shadow is almost like a reflection. I like the way you've used the space. It's, it's sort of almost rule of thirds, but it isn't. The fact that it's sort of sitting on the surface at a tiny little bit of a tilt, to me, it just disrupts it a bit. And I just think it's great. It is technically beautifully, beautifully executed it's so simple there's so few colors there's great shadows but it's the light which gets me uh, i don't know if you've got a little light inside there which is doing something or maybe a little reflector maybe a little bit of tin foil or something and there's a light coming down it's the fact that the way the light is sort of fading off up the sides it's like the light is coming out of it and yet there is the shadow underneath it very intriguing how you've done it but that aside just looking at it it's just comfortable and easy to look at it's a really great shot 
uh, well done Irene absolutely awesome well done everybody well done everybody you're an awesome group of people you truly are um, I forgot to say we do a few um, Q&A a, a few questions where are we half past eight and do do a little bit I'm happy to hang out with you for a little while if you'd like me to um, if anybody's got any other questions it's coming in quite fast uh, I think I'm probably driving Emma nuts because she's not able to harvest questions because I've started sort of doing it along the way I'm sorry Em. <clears throat> um, so yeah somebody if anybody's got any questions we, I'm happy to hang out for a little while if there's anything we talked about you weren't sure and you kind of want to ask something if not you're welcome to go and get your cocoa and uh, get settled of course I'm assuming you're in England there um, no I've seen a couple coming in I should have asked earlier forgive me do you use exposure bracketing Ken Powell asked <clears throat> yes sometimes but only if I need it um, all I would say about exposure bracketing is if you bracket exposures because you're not sure how to get the right one that's not not the best way of going about it um, that's just like sort of trying all the different uh, no it's a bad analogy I'm not going to go there uh, but well maybe it's like trying all the different pills in the medicine cabinet when you feel unwell hoping that one of them will make make you feel better um, exposure bracketing is really really useful if you have got a scene which is super contrasty and it is way outside the camera's dynamic range ability to capture it um, so yes I do exposure bracket if I need to so I'd shoot raw files let's say we got a really really bright sky and really really dark shadows how would I go about it I'll find the middle exposure the histogram is going to be going off both ends there's nothing you can do about it that's when you need to bracket the histogram is ramping off at both ends I just find the place where it's ramping off about the same amount at both ends that's where I'll start the middle exposure then I'll shoot one at that exposure one two stops below and one two stops above and with the Fuji because I know what it can cope with generally speaking that's enough take those three Lightroom photo merge HDR boom and it looks completely natural but that's the only time I would use uh, bracketing and I'd say that's the best time to use it if you're not sure what your exposure should be really go and learn how to do it properly uh, ultimate beginners course is the one and it will teach you everything you need to know it's a really badly named course that because someone actually put uh, gave me a <laughs> bit of a bad review the other day uh, about the seven blocks because they thought it was about cameras and it isn't the seven blocks is about how to think things through how to take all the stuff from the ultimate beginners course which is all camera related composition light all that stuff it's all in there it's nothing more you need and the seven blocks is joining it together I, I badly named it because I know I've seen on the on the group a few people have said mm, am I really a beginner do I need that it's everything to do with the camera end because the camera end is the beginner stuff that's the easy stuff once you've got that you can then be creative you can use this thing you can spot light do all that cool stuff you guys are doing anyway right sorry I'm waffling um, and Sue Owen do you think black and white is better for these types of shots sharp shades no Sue I think it varies all the time I really do I think it varies all the time for example this great shot of um, Irene's here oh, it's gonna be very complicated it's not a black and white uh, you know it isn't black and white it is in color and it's a very monochromatic shot because there are so few colors however uh, I just think what else we got um George Stevenson webinars are you going to rerun them yes George we had a minor minor panic going on um, because I was hoping to have them re ready relaunched because I know they sold out and a lot of people didn't get to see them uh, we were hoping to have them ready for tonight 
techie things. We're learning all this stuff, how to make sure people, a few things went wrong, didn't they, last time? Some of you guys know, but you got there in the end. Trying to get all the techie stuff working. We had a few issues. I was hoping it would all be ready for tonight. It isn't. It should be ready for Tuesday. Keep an eye on the group. Uh, and we'll send all of you guys who've left me your email address. We'll, we'll let you know. They are coming. And I'm also working on another one because they were really successful and I enjoyed it. So there's a new one coming, which is all about light. It was not going to be ready this week, but it's on its way. They take a bit of making. Um, what else? Mike. Lupique, have you seen an uptake in people taking the online courses? Yeah, I have. And thank you. Thank you all very, very much for doing that. Uh, and I'm delighted that you place your confidence in me. I'm delighted that so many of you have in the past placed your confidence and from what I'm reading on the group, benefited from it. Uh, so yeah, thank you. And of course, it's making a big difference because right now we're not running workshops in Africa and Cambodia and all over the world we're not doing it we you know we should be selling next years now and we're not so you're really really making a difference thank you um do i have to worry about gold now if i'm shooting in black and white no you don't rick mentor because if you're shooting in black and white it depends early golden hour or blue hour i think you mean do you mean blue hour or do you mean golden hour? golden hour is sort of before the sun dips below the horizon and the sky goes gold when you shoot into the sun or blue hour which is just after the sun's gone below i'm not sure which you mean you will get more of a gradation when there's still light in the sky if you're shooting black and white but obviously not from a color point of view if it's early blue hour let's say then uh, or blue 10 minutes as it should be called then you'll get a fade in the sky. Um, what else have we got? I'm only going to do a couple more, guys, because we're running on, and there's a little thing I want to tell you, talk to you about afterwards. Um, if light is so important, why not have a week's competition about light and not shapes or toys or bees? Glenn Haskins. Haskins. Yeah, Haskins, sorry. What a good idea. Might just take you up on that. I just might take you up on that because I've got to think up a whole load of new concepts, haven't I now, to keep you hungry photographers busy because we are going to continue it's going to be much the same as it is um basil mabuza what are your thoughts on using zebra settings um if you find them useful use them uh, zebra settings are uh, on some cameras electronic cameras that will show you little zebras they're, they're, they're like little flashy crawly ant things saying where the highlights are and you can set them to where you want them to be it's quite complex if you find them useful use them personally i never use them um you can't hear me why can't you hear me i've got a little thing going on who said we can't hear you emma said we can't hear you can you hear me guys write something because as far as i can see the sound is all going out fine Okay, good. Right. I don't know what's going on. Apparently, I've got a 20 megabyte upload speed. And according to this, my stream is green and therefore it should be fine. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Where are we? Does humour matter in photography? Definitely. When, <laughs> as I did in Cambodia a while back, I don't know if you're watching this, Marie Caravan, you were there pulled up on a couple of quad bikes exploring some new areas out in the farmlands in Cambodia. The sun was going down desperate to find something useful, you know, as foreground and to make a great shot, leapt off, just led down straight on the sort of the wet, muddy ground, because that's what you do to get the shot, got the shot, and then realised I just led on an ant's nest. A sense of humour is very important. Um, I think it's great if you can portray humour, Nadia. Um, yeah, if you're doing, you know, a reportage type thing somebody posted a wonderful picture into the group sorry i don't remember who it was you said he went for a walk around town you caught this picture and there's a guy stood outside the door and he's just smiling and laughing and i get the happiness out of that i love street photography i love that sort of thing um what else okay john ellis can saying we'll give you a challenge and we'll all judge your results no chance <laughs> Yeah, I might be up for that at some point. I might be. It's not going to be for a while because I don't have the time to go and I'm going to have to deliver, aren't I? You know, I'm the big mouth. I'm the one who'd have to deliver and I'd want to make sure that I did. <clears throat> and at the moment, 
I got enough on my plate. But I might take you up on that at some point, John. Jill, what are your favourite UK venues? Mm. Haven't really got any, Jill. Because they change all the time. Um, they change all the time. It would be more kind of life streety. I'd probably, probably kind of like rural stuff, but I like having people in shots. <clears throat> Difficult question. I probably haven't got one. I haven't really got a favourite place other than to be very generalistic and say things like Asia. Uh, when we were researching in Morocco for the, the new Morocco workshop, which should have been launched ages ago, but just as we were bringing it out, we got locked down, no point. Um, you know, when we got into the countryside of Morocco, that was fantastic. You know, the people were just lovely and interesting and friendly. Very different to Marrakesh, if you've been there, which is, you know, it's quite bustly, it's quite hustly, but you get out into the countryside, it was great. Um, Trish Church, is there any point using a polarising filter when light from can dehaze? Yes. Trish, a polarising filter it polarises light. It only lets light through from a certain direction. Light room will dehaze, yes, <clears throat> but a polarising filter can also remove reflections where you don't want them. It will take some glare off things and, and saturate colour a little better. It's a different thing to just dehazing. Um, as you would in, in Lightroom on a sky or something like that. Uh, Moose Harples, uh, exposure compensation over manual legitimate. Not sure what you're saying, Moose. Um, I think you are saying, <coughs> um, is it better to use exposure compensation or manual? It depends again on the situation. Sometimes exposure compensation is really useful because it can be much faster, but there are other times when the light is continuous, it's much faster to shoot in manual mode because you haven't got to change things. It, 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 too big a question. I'm sorry, my friend. It's horses for courses finding the right one. I'm only gonna pretty much draw a line. There is one question I am gonna answer here from Glyn Haskins. Why do you not do workshops in the UK? I do a few. I do my little beginner's workshop locally. I, do, I want to do more of the seminars, We've just set up a masterclass in Edinburgh. Uh, that's all in place. And somebody had even booked a ticket, booked a seat, and then boom, lockdown. We will bring those back out. I want to bring the masterclass to more places in the UK. As for workshop workshops, the stuff like I do in Asia, <clears throat> for me, the UK isn't the best place because the sort of photography I like usually involves a bit of craziness, a bit of something you've never seen before, a new experience. And also we do the social responsibility with our workshops, whereby we will go somewhere where someone's doing a bit of good and putting a bit of, bit of, bit of good back into the world. And, and we'd like to take people to see that. Uh, and it's usually something visually interesting, such as we, we took a group to see a popo um, in Cambodia clearing landmines left over from the war so long ago you know what an amazing experience to see these guys and how they do it and to photograph them do it and you know then they took us somewhere and exploded a few so we could hear some bangs in the distance all very safe but you know by doing that we're getting you to see and experience something different something strange in the world that you would never get the chance to see and experience but also by you being there we can donate and put something into the good work that's happening there. I'm not saying there isn't good work here too. Sure, I have approached a few UK organisations like, you know, maybe to people who work with homeless on the street. Wouldn't that be really cool for some documentary street photography to maybe to do that? But it's very difficult here because there are restrictions and mm, they didn't really want me to do it. Uh, straightforward landscape, Glyn, it's not my thing, I'm afraid. I'm not the best person to take, take anyone on a landscape photography workshop. Uh, it's not my thing. I don't get that excited about it. So uh, it, also the weather's pretty strange. Uh, you can't rely on it. Um, anyway, let's have a look. Glenn, you can't afford to come to Cambodia. That's okay. See if you can come to Edinburgh. And I'm going to look at other places, maybe down the West Country, maybe somewhere in Wales, somewhere in the Midlands. We'll run some masterclasses. They're two-day masterclasses. Don't cost anything like as much as a flight to Cambodia. I get it. I understand. Um, right. So I think I'm pretty much going to begin to, I think I'm going to draw a line underneath this, apart from Robin Punt, who asked me a great question. What sort of photography is outside your comfort zone? What do you not like having to take? I've been doing this a long time, Robin. 
very long time. I wrote my first invoice, you know, as a professional photographer in, in uh, I think it was June 1993. So I've tackled all sorts of things for all sorts of clients. That's a tough question. What do I not want to do? Animal pet photography, stuff like that. I haven't got the patience. Um, I haven't got the knowledge. Sports doesn't really interest me. Um, and luckily enough, I don't have to take commissions unless I find them fun and interesting. And I like the people these days. So uh, what I love doing is the training. Um, anyway, all I want to say to you guys is the next challenge is going to be going live very, very soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm really interested to see what some of you guys have mentioned tonight make of that challenge because you've kind of been doing it this week. Uh, but I thought originally, as this was going to be the last week, we should go out with a bang. It isn't the last week. You probably saw a little video where I had a very robust meeting with the guys in my team to figure out how we can make lockdown work. It takes me about 30 hours per week lockdown. Uh, sorry, per month. It would take me to do lockdown about 30, depending on how often we do it. Let's say it takes me 30 hours to do two lockdowns. Where's that time going to come from? What are we not going to be able to do because I'm spending time doing that? But I love doing this so much. I'm determined to make it work. And I think we found a way. This week, hopefully on Thursday, I will do this live broadcast just into the group. We're going to do this, but we're going to do it in the Facebook group. So it's private. It's just us. Um, because I want to run some ideas past you, give you a better idea of what's going to happen. Emma and I have got tomorrow blocked out to go, right, we now know what we want to do, how are we going to do this, and what's it going to take, and what do we need to, to do to make that work? Um, and then we will know more. So thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for making this group what it is. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do something I love doing. And I hope that after lockdown ends, I get to meet some of you guys on some seminars when Cameras Don't Take Pictures comes out again. and maybe on some masterclasses around the UK and in other places. So be well, be happy. Uh, this isn't the end. Don't think of this as the end of photo lockdown. This is now becoming, it's gone from photo lockdown to photography locked down because we're going to lock this sucker down. We're going to nail it. We're going to build that creativity and it's now going to move on out into the future. Okay. It's still going to look much the same. Be well, guys. I must go and uh, thank you all for being here. I will see you all soon. Take care.